Neuroleadership is a word that describes a new field. It's a field that's been around since about 2007. And it's really the field of what goes on in the brain when managers or leaders are trying to motivate, develop, improve, uh, help their teams. Currently our understanding of management and leadership is uh, at, at best poor. Uh, despite 65,000 books about leadership, uh, people still prefer a, a better boss over a pay rise. Uh, we, we've got a long way to go to improve the quality of leadership. So I, we think that understanding what's going on in the brain has a lot of uh, value, a lot of benefits for improving how people uh, actually lead and manage others. I think overall the challenge is that most of our practices were developed in an era, era when uh, the work was physical. It was, it was physical, codified uh, process work. And we can't see a lot of the work now. Uh, the work that's going on inside people's heads. And, and we, we have a lot of work to do to understand the processes involved in that. And organisations are very, very slow to change their practices. Yeah, many are still just bringing in the idea of quality. Um, and uh, you know, one client I know said they have, you know, that they regularly work with their leaders. You know, every 10 years they take them off site for a day. Uh, so organisations are very slow to catch up to the way the world's working now. The way it's working is it's, it's all inside our heads. Uh, and we need to understand how that functions, in particular, how to improve other people's thinking. We're, we're really bad at that. I, I think Finnish leaders are, are in a really interesting position. Uh, you know, leaders everywhere are often unaware of the impact that they have on others, that they accidentally create threat responses, that they accidentally um, reduce people's creativity. I think that is slightly less true in this country. Uh, you've got less of a power distance, and, and, but they have a different set of challenges here perhaps. And how do you actually manage accountability without creating threat is an interesting challenge here. How do you get people to be more creative uh, during a time of change um, without creating committees that slows everything right down? So I think they have a different set of challenges here that are uh, you know, still no less challenging than other countries. I, I think for, for myself as a leader, the more I understand about the brain, uh, the more I understand everything that's happening moment to moment in my day, whether it's why I can't think straight uh, after a, you know, a long day or what's going on in a relationship with someone. Uh, I've got more and more language for what's happening and that gives me a greater sense of certainty, a greater sense of control. I'm able to make different choices than I, than I might otherwise.